Hey everybody, Jerry Williams, AK Greater Sapien here. Thanks for stopping by. So today I'm gonna to do something I rarely do and recommend a video for you all to watch. I'll show a bit of it here, but I think the entire video is an important one for those of us involved in the community of science-based conversations. In particular, I think it's a video that my distinguished opposition, the globe-denying crowd, should watch. And that video is Neil deGrasse Tyson's My Response to Terrence Howard. No, 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 don't, don't turn this off, my flat earth anti-fans. I know I just invoked the name of someone you consider to be the great Satan, one of the worst gatekeepers of the globe hoax who deserves to be tried in The Hague, but if you watch my videos regularly, even if it's because you hate me and are hoping to see me fail, hear me out. Apparently, over the past decade or so, actor Terrence Howard, best known for his role as the no-riz version of Colonel James Rhodey Rhodes in the first Iron Man film, has been on a journey of scientific and mathematical awakening. And like many awakenings of those who have too much time on their hands and an inflated sense of their capabilities, his awakening isn't limited to an increased enthusiasm in learning about different fields of science, but includes the idea that he has the capacity to revolutionize all of known science and mathematics. This revolution involves a lot of numerology, new age spirituality, and of course, a vast conspiracy to hide the truth of reality from the world. Recently, Howard went on the Joe Rogan podcast and put Neil deGrasse Tyson on blast for criticizing his ideas, insulting other scientists and gatekeeping for the status quo of math and science. Now, I will admit that I did not watch or listen to the full interview with Joe Rogan. I don't follow Rogan anyway, as I have a healthy sense of self, and I couldn't bring myself to watch the two of them out of fear of developing Jivabetes. Jivabetes is like diabetes, but instead of high blood sugar, it's high bullshit. In response to Terrence Howard putting his name on the street like that, DeGrasse Tyson delivered an excellent video of engaging with someone's extreme scientific claims in a respectful way. In the video, DeGrasse Tyson explains the backstory of his interactions with Howard. How about Eight years ago, Tyson's mother suggested he reach out to Howard, as, he had, as she had heard that he wanted to be a scientist when he was younger. He reached out to Howard, but Howard first wanted to send him a paper he had written. He sent me a 36-page treatise. And it was only 36 pages. Page, page. Out of respect for Howard, Tyson gave Howard's paper the same response he would give a fellow scientist's proposal, a peer review. You come up with an idea, you present it either at a conference or you first write it up and you send it to your colleagues. It is their duty to alert you of things about your ideas that are either misguided or wrong or, or there's a mis the calculation that doesn't work out or the, the logic doesn't comport. That's their job. In a video, Tyson presents the exact words he used in response to Howard's claims. For example, his review begins, it's titled one times one equals two. So I lead off by saying, this is an ambitious work that is a clear indication of a restless active mind. Within these pages, however, there are many assumptions and statements that are underinformed, misinformed, or simply false, thereby compromising or nullifying many of the subsequent conclusions you have drawn. That's exactly what should happen in a peer review out of respect for one another's intellect. Does that sound familiar to anyone here? How many times have I said on camera or have some of you said in the comments that if you start off from a bad premise, a false assumption, it doesn't matter how logical your steps going forward are, it's going to take you to the wrong conclusion. There are moments in the video where Tyson shows us his words to Howard and Howard's interpretation of those words on the Rogan podcast. But go to page two, and in here, he mentions people who he declares were persecuted because their vision exceeded the myopic view of their contemporaries. And he mentions Walter Russell, Nikola Tesla, John Keeley, and many, many more. The work of Russell, Walter Russell, has eluded any experimental support, and the work of Keeley is generally not reproducible. Science is about reproducibility. I can have the most brilliant, crazy, fun idea ever, and if I perform an experiment and no one else can duplicate that experiment, it belongs in the trash heap. As for the work of Tesla, much of it 
had very real value to physics and our understanding of electromagnetism. And that value is duly recognized by my community in the naming of a unit of electromagnetism after him. You can't get more badass than having a unit named after you. Much of the rest of his work was fringe and unrealized, either for violating known laws of physics or for being simply impractical. Just because you do some good stuff doesn't mean everything you ever did is gonna be great. Newton's laws, Einstein's relativity, quantum physics were all revolutionary ideas that appeared in peer review settings or journals. Meanwhile, most of the work of Russell and Keeley had no such success with their ideas. Attack that I immediate that I talked about Walter Russell and Victor Schauberger and John Keeley as and Tesla as the people that I looked up to. So Tesla. he threw shit on on he was like, well, Tesla's Tesla stuff worked, but Tesla was never really respected and out there. When I'm just simply stating the fact, I don't think of that as trashing. I think of that as being honest. And here we see an example of the dilemma we face when trying to engage with, say, globe deniers in a scientific way. When you have people who are making claims that they are smarter than Einstein, smarter than Hawking, or smarter than tenured educators and people who have been boots on the ground in their fields for decades, and then you treat them with the directness you would give someone of that earned respect in their field, it gets taken as an attack. They don't have the thick skin that comes with scientific rigor. So I urge you all to go watch this video by Tyson. It's only 17 minutes long. Uh, the link is in the description. I hope it will give my detractors some insight into the way I'm thinking when I approach the larger video breakdowns that I do. I understand that it's your desire to get into a debate style forum with me where you can rapid fire, gish gallop, all the nonsense word salad claims you want, but that's not how I do things. There are plenty of people who do and will gladly tolerate the chaos, but that is not how scientific claims are tested. If you want to claim you are revolutionizing fields of science, you need to go through the gauntlet the way everyone before you did. And that means presenting your claims and evidence, putting your name behind it, having people like me go over it line by line and point out where your claim's strengths lie, where their weaknesses lie, and unfortunately, more often than not, where you lie. That's my job, that's what I do! I don't lose! I win! I win! Is there no one on this planet to even challenge me? Maybe you came by to congratulate me on last night's victory.